Welcome back, Seven Days to Die modding fans. This is Zith, and I've started getting questions on my Salvage Bat mod and how I went ahead and did that in Unity. So I wanted to do a quick video to, to show you how, how to make your own uh, modifiable objects. The first thing to do is to create a um, basic handheld object, whatever object that you want. In this case, I used a baseball bat. You could use a piece of pipe. Um, you could use a stuffed animal, doesn't matter whatever object is, create it in Unity like you would any other item, and go ahead and export it and make sure it works properly in the game when held in the hand. So if you've got a stuffed animal and you're smacking somebody with it, it should look right in the hand before you do anything else. Once you've got that, um, got that completed, got the object that you want working properly, come back into the Unity and we're going to have to add a couple of child objects to that um, particular um, Unity model here. So here we have called um, plain bat, and it has a, um, like any other, when you make it an item, it's basically an empty object as set at zero, zero, zero. Under that, we have the baseball bat mesh as a child. And of course it has the properties needed to get it oriented so it fits in the hand and works properly. What you're going to add now is another child object under the plain, under the base empty object, and you're gonna uh, call it exactly attachment with a capital A, A-T-T-A-C-H-M-E-N-T-S. And, uh, and that is an empty object. And you create another empty object called grip under the attachment child. And again, that's also an empty object. Um, you can do different things if you wanted there, but if you want to use my XML exactly it is, is it's going to look for these names. So have it exactly the same, spelled exactly the same way, capitalized exactly the same way. So you have, again, a root empty object. Under that, you have a mesh object, and you have an empty object called attachments. And under that empty object called attachments, you have grip. Now, the um, you notice the orientation here. I picked an arbitrary point for, for this purposes of um, where the character will hold the object. I set that essentially to um, a, as a reference point for everything that's going to go forward. So you, it could have been some other spot, but I found this to be a real clean approach to put it where the hand is in the game. So now that you've added those objects in there, let's go ahead and start working on our item modifiers. Uh, for example, I, I made a different ones I can show you, but here is called the bean can bat. Uh, and basically, it's just a little object here. Um, that kind of looks like a can of beans. Uh, it's basically a Campbell soup can. And uh, get oriented like that. And some bolts and, and uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, where's my little paw here? And there we go. So I just basically assembled that out of multiple objects. So you see here, it just has essentially a clamp. I put a knife on it and a bolt, doesn't matter. Essentially, back again, you have a empty parent object here, all at zero, zero, zero. And then you put your meshes um, under that object, just like you would any other, any other item with the proper coordinates. What you want to do, though, is you want to sl slide this around and scale it around so it fits exactly how you want it on your base object. So um, if you want it, um, you want it basically to fit so it looks good in game. And that's really an eyeball type of thing. There's no magic coordinates. You basically just play around with it till you get that on there. Same thing if I went to um, elsewhere like the uh, rubber grip. And I zoom out, you see the rubber grip is where it goes. And then if you want uh, one of those gears, the gear goes there. So you just put the different objects on it. Now, in my case, I set four modifiable points. Um, one in the pommel down here, then uh, the grip and the middle of the bat and the head of the bat. And those are going to be referenced in XML as pommel, grip, uh, sweet spot, and uh, then uh, the head. So you'll see those references. Um, and that's pretty much it. We'll go back here. Um, you will see if I go to click on this, you see that the orientation point of that and then the gear is there, so on and so forth. But the nice thing about it is when you set up the reference um, on the bat to this grip point, all of these items in the XML are going to refer to that point rather than their own points in there. So that makes it really simple and clean. It looked like the fun pimps do separate coordinates for each one. You're welcome to do that. 
I found it to be a real pain in the ass. Um, having a single reference point is, was much easier to do because I could just simply copy and paste in XML all day long. So let's look at the XML. Uh, well, before I do that, so once you get, like in this case, the bean can bat, same process of dragging that object over here and ex exporting it. You can export all the various parts all together in one single Unity prefab. I think that's all you need to know about the design. So let's go ahead and look at the XML so you know. Um, first of all, you need to describe your base item. Um, what's important here, uh, I could in this case, I, I you followed the uh, TFP naming convention, Melee Wood Bat, but you have to set the tags um, to reference what you want to, what, what you're trying to do here. So again, I used Bat, Wood Bat, um, some of these tags I don't actually use. It's a it's a melee weapon. Now TFP uses melee, so if you have a uh, item modifier that they make for melee weapons, it'll still work on this model, um, even though it's not one of their objects. It'll still work if you use the same tags. Um, and then here I have the various points in there. You got the shaft, the grip, the head, the pommel and the sweet spot. I didn't use shaft. I was going to do that one. I should really pull that out. I use grip, head, pommel, and sweet spot. Um, this one not braced is, I tried to basically make um, modifiers so they would attach or stay permanent and be able to toggle between those. But unfortunately, that requires a feature that's not hooked up yet. So I'm just leaving that for now. Um, the way you call the mesh file is the same. You do in A17 now. Nothing is unique about that. If you want the object to appear in the hand in game, um, you need to make a hand mesh file, which is basically the same object. Uh, if I want to show you the bean can, um, let's see, bean can hold here. You see, it's actually in um, a completely different place. It's down near that uh, um, where the hand is, a little bit below. But it's basically the exact same mesh, just uh, flipped upside down and oriented differently to look in the hand. Um, so you can build all those handhold versions you know, as well. So back here again, if you don't uh, have a hand mesh, don't you don't need to include it. Uh, uh, there's my hold type two, which is what I said before. Um, the next uh, here, here basically for the base bat, just like in vanilla XML, you set the vanilla properties, uh, damage properties, attacks per minute, everything else that you want for that base object. See, I also made an aluminum bat, which is a little different, um, but essentially the same type of factors. So once you've set up your base items, let's look at the item modifiers. Now, in this case, um, if you look at the file, there's a lot of commented stuff out here. This is for, again, for that um, a different approach that I did not use with the bracketing system for, you know, if it had a bracket on it, it would be removable. If it didn't have a bracket, it, didn't, it won't, but that's not working yet. So that's just kind of commented out till I can get till uh, they hook it up. But here's the bean can bat. And again, it has an installable tag called bat. Now, what that's going to do is refer back to this item and says, is it a bat? Yep, there it is. OK, so this item modifier will not go on, say, a club. It has to be installed on a bat. Modifier tag means, where can you put it? And in this case, it has to be put on um, the, the head location. That prevents you from putting, if you have um, the um, bean bat has a modifier of head, and you have the hoe bat, which hoe head that has the same tag. They're going to block each other. They're not going to let you put two heads on the same base object. So you set that down for the location in there. The attachment type can be one of two things. Attachment, if you want it renew, uh, removable. Mod, if you want it to be put, once it's put on, it's stuck. So if you want to put like nails in the bat and you don't think the person can pull those nails out, you'd swap that to the word mod. There's also blocking tags, which right now don't seem to be working. Um, that's would be prevent um, this from being put on something that was not braced. And again, the not braced tag I put here, but again, that's not working right now. So uh, hopefully in a future release. Rarity is just a factor um, for loot. Uh, and if you want this mod to randomly sometimes appear in loot on a, a bat, you would pass a parameter to it from zero to one, how often you wanted that to happen. So the bean cat, the mod bean can bat 
is rarer than say, um, let's see, rarity here, 75. The pick bat's a very, very common one. So again, from a scale of zero to one. I think I covered most of the, uh, well, let me go ahead and do here. Again, same type of way you call the object from the Unity 3D package, that has not changed. You can have a custom um, uh, uh, item. The hold type, that refers to the hand hold type. And I use, uh, I'm using 14 right now. Um, you can use basically whatever you want. Um, 21 is the most common one. Actually, I'm not really sure now that I look at why I put 14 there, but I'll have to look at that. Usually I use 21, which is open hand position. I think because in this case, I have the hand gripping the can like uh, rather than having the thing appear in an open hand. So it works either way. You, you have a lot of flexibility there. Um, the uh, uh, Let's see, what else? So here's the section here. Uh, this is where you add or subtract damage and effects. So you have the damage and properties of the base weapon, but by adding an effect group, and you can call this anything you want. It's my special effects. It doesn't matter. This is just for just for you know readability. Call it something. But anything in this effect group will go ahead and add or subtract, depending if you do a base add or base uh, subtract, these values from that of the base weapon. The uh, down the next section here, you can add additional effect groups for um, things that you want to happen. In this case, if you want to add an injury bleeding buff randomly, um, uh, a certain percentage of the time, you can, connect, you can use this. Pull the stuff right out of the buff XML. I didn't do anything unique in here, um, but you put whatever properties and effects you want this uh, little bean can to have. And then finally, this is where the magic happens here under special effects. Um, as you say, this is where the modifier is attached to the base item, in this case, to the bat. And again, you're calling again the bean can out of the uh, package, and you are attaching it to the parent transform, where I called attachments grip. And so those are the two child objects. And setting an offset of 000, zero, zero which is really neat and clean, um, the way I set it up so you don't have to screw around with um, multiple transforms and multiple offsets. Although your mileage may vary, you may find a better way than I did, um, but I found this to be easy and clean because I can use exactly the same transform and ob offset for every object that's gonna go on these bats. So that's basically the, um, the XML, and uh, it's not really complicated once uh, you see how it works. And I'm really looking forward to people making a, a lot of fun item modifiers for uh, for, that I'd enjoy using a game. I thought it would be great to take a pipe and put various screw type attachments on a pipe, but you can go nuts with this and modify shovels or anything you want. So um, basically, and also the same thing kind of goes for guns. I haven't played with guns, uh, how uh, come up with a method for guns. And I probably won't because I'm not a real big fan of using the guns in, uh, uh, in game, but I'm sure somebody else will. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this and learned something. If you have any questions, um, the best place to ask me is on the modding Discord, uh, on Guppy's Discord. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, uh, there. Have a great day.